Okay, so good morning everyone. My name is Alejandro Leiva and we are presenting part three of digital marketing. And I wanna give you a little background of what we've been doing in these three um, three parts basically. So on the first one, we talked a lot about understanding what digital marketing is, uh, what we are getting ourselves into exponential growth. And especially um, we talked a lot about our vision and why um, step out of our comfort zone. So uh, the second part, we actually learn how to stream. So we connected everything together and all the audio, we learned how to use the mixer, uh, use Zoom, OBS. So if you don't know or you haven't watched that video, so please go to part two and you'll be able to see all of that information, what it's available out there. So uh, that was part two. And I have to say part three, it's my favorite part. And at the beginning of these videos, I did explain to everyone that it was also going to be a learning journey for me because I didn't know how to do a lot of the things I thought you had to do. Um, and basically all I did was research and uh, learn to do it myself so that I could teach you. So again, for what I'm going to show you today, I also did a lot of um, reading. Uh, I did read quite a few books. Um, I'm actually just finishing, I have it here, um, the last book that uh, I figure would help me guide you through this part. And uh, I learned a lot. And I have to say a lot of this stuff I was already doing probably just out of intuition, uh, but it was really good to learn uh, more about this and figure out different ways for us to deliver the same information. So we're going to talk about growing our business now. We're actually going to talk about how can we actually grow our business. So I'm going to go into that part and I posted here, well, I wrote here how to create um, effective and relevant content online. And that's going to be a big part of what we're going to be talking about today. So the first thing I want to address is the importance of communication. Um, unfortunately, we have the misconception that posting means we are communicating, right? Like, and I, I does, this doesn't only go to social media, but in general, talking doesn't mean communicating. The fact that you are talking doesn't mean the other person is actually getting the same message that, that you are trying to deliver. So we need to think about communication, not as us putting it out there, but people actually receiving. So our biggest focus is what are people receiving? Are people getting my message? Are people getting what I want to say? Because that's going to be a huge key when it comes to creating content. We need to think about basically the other person. What do they want to hear? And am I communicating um, accordingly? Like are people understanding? Are people getting my message? Am I uh, communicating in a way that is attractive to them? So I believe that all of you guys here and all of the instructors have a huge gift. I think as a fitness instructor, we have the gift of pro providing happiness to people, providing a he healthier lifestyle of really having a positive impact on people. And it's a shame that we are not able to communicate that because then that kind of breaks our, that kind of breaks what we are doing, right? Like we, we are amazing at what we do. We work really hard, uh, but we are not doing our content right. And that just leaves us at, at a smaller level or a smaller scale. So when we think about communication, um, it's important that you address what they, what your tribe needs to hear. And that doesn't mean that you're changing what you want to say, it's changing the way you're saying it. Okay, I wanna leave this out there and I wanna make it very clear that your message is your message and that's the message that you're gonna put across. But it is important that we know how to deliver this message. So then I put here um, social media campaigns. And I, I think that this is a big deal for a lot of us because we 
uh, sometimes have a lot of people following us or a lot of likes um, or not that many likes and we can't understand what's going on and we think maybe nobody can see me but we need to understand how social media works. Social media is a pay-per-view platform which means that if you don't pay for people to see you they are not going to see you and this has nothing to do with your content or who you are or that what you're doing is wrong. It's just simply the way the algorithm works. And the way the algorithm works is that it's basically going to be uh, delivered to those or they're going to have a spotlight if you pay. If you don't pay, then your friends will see you and maybe some of your friends' friends may see you. But those days where you will just randomly go viral are gone. Uh, 10 years ago, five years ago, this could happen on Facebook. You could post a video and all of a sudden you go viral and everybody's sharing and liking this and you would reach out to hundreds of thousands of people, if not more. But those days are gone. Right now, um, social media, Facebook, Instagram. And when I say social media, I should include everything like Google, YouTube, um, anything that is online, online based or anything that is on the internet. It's going to be pay-per-view. If you want to be seen, you need to pay. So for that, we have social media campaigns. And I want to be clear um, in the fact that you do need social media campaigns because, again, you are not going to... These organically grown days are very difficult to achieve. And it's going to take a very long time. And it has nothing to do with you. It's just they are going to make sure that you're not seen so that you pay. So if we have to see it this way, think about it as back in the day, we will pay for a magazine advertisement or for a radio spot, or um, we will pay in for flyers, banners. So think about, it's just a marketing investment, right? This is just part of your marketing. So social media campaigns are just part of your marketing. And uh, we're gonna talk in a little bit later about um, how to do that as well. And then I, I put here your customer journeys because I, be, I think that's one of the biggest parts that we are missing as fitness instructors is we're putting a lot of information out there, right? We keep posting, we keep putting videos, uh, pretty pictures. Uh, we keep putting things out there, the boots and promotions and buy this and do this. And this is why I love it. And we're putting a bunch of content out there but there's no customer journey to this. So we need to think about the customer journey and I divided it in, the set, in um, four sections. So first you get people uh, people's attention. So the way I can get people's attention is by providing interesting information, right? So my information has to be interesting and that has to be interesting to the people I want to attract. So my tribe needs to be interested on this then it has to be relevant information. And what do I mean by relevant information is, for example, I'm very interested in the universe and the sun and the moon, and I love looking into the stars and learning more about this. This is very interesting to me, but it's not relevant to my everyday life, right? Because it doesn't influence my everyday life. My everyday life has nothing to do with how hot the sun is. So. You might be providing information that is interesting, but if it's not relevant, it's not going to have the same attention. So in order to get, uh, in order to pass from attention to interest, the information you provide has to be relevant. It has to be something that would actually help me on my everyday life. And this could be, uh, for example, for me, because I'm doing a lot of digital marketing, probably things that I find into my social media are five different ways to create um, div um, content for digital marketing. Three of the mo things that you need to look into when you're creating your business or things like this. This is what is interesting to me and it's relevant to me. So if you're focused on your fitness classes, maybe it's not going to be every day pictures of you jumping or information about uh, the boots, maybe because this is just information, right? This is not communication. But if you also mix that up with uh, interaction with your participants and information about 
um, tips that you can help them uh, pre-workout um, supplements that you take that you like that maybe they will like uh, post-workout protein shakes that you like or what's your favorite drink during the day uh, the benefits of green tea anything that would actually have an impact on my everyday life mental health is such a huge thing right now so are you feeling okay uh, do you know that working out just 20 minutes a day can completely change your day? Here's a free workout. Here's something for you to try. And your content has to be good enough that not only is it going to catch my attention, my interest, and it's going to be relevant to me, but I feel the need to keep following you because you are going to give me more information, information that is going to be helpful to me. So, um... Uh, that I, that's why I put it at the end. Uh, find your tribe, know your tribe, and serve a purpose in their life because that's really how you create a digital community, a community overall. But in this case, we're focusing on digital community. So you will create a community if you focus on their everyday life and try to make that everyday life better. That's how you help people, and a lot of people wanna want the recognition and a lot of people are chasing uh recognition and attention in social media but unfortunately not that many people are actually looking to help we we like the applause but we don't like the work so when you decide that you're going to be helpful and that you're going to serve your tribe and that you're going to help people people are way more likely to actually be interested in you. So this is something very important that I think we need to look into. So we're going to um, think about this information as a cone. So you get people's attention. Let's say you get a thousand people's attention. Then out of those thousands, maybe 300 are actually interested on what you have to say. And then there's this desire to, hmm, I should be part of that, or I should join that group, or I should be doing what they're doing. That desire, right? Like that, hmm, I should probably try this. And then from that, to actually taking action, so it kind of goes like a cone, it goes down, to actually taking action, that's going to be a few steps. So when I talk about customer journey, you want to make these steps as easy as possible. We have the advantage of being able to achieve, to reach out to thousands of people on Facebook every day and Instagram. Uh, TikTok is a big one because TikTok is what Facebook was 10 years ago. It's so easy to go viral on TikTok right now. So I, I, I'm still getting used to it, but I do feel like it's a big thing that we need to get into. So think about it this way. You have a cone. You have people's attention, you have their interest, desire, and then the action. So it's almost like a filter from all these thousands of likes you get to the comments, to people actually being interested on it, to actually messaging you or taking action. Um, so we need to think about this process and make it as easy as possible and as out there as possible because if I reach a thousand people, uh, well, actually, I'll talk about that in a little bit. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but that's the first thing, importance of communication. Now, let's look into this because uh, I find this very interesting. So the goal is to work less, make more through something meaningful. We have the misconception that the more you work, the more you make, right? Like if you work really hard, you're going to have a lot, but that's actually not true because if you were, people who work 15 hour shifts a day will be rich, right? They'll be millionaires. So their goal is not to work more. The goal is to achieve more through less work. So that's the beauty of digital marketing. You can do a lot more in just one thing. So I don't have to work as much i just have to work hard when i am working and the uh, and i posted here something meaningful because at the end of the day that's what's gonna really make you carry through and carry your vision when what you're doing is something that actually 
makes a positive impact in someone's life. That's when you want to keep going. That's what makes it exciting for you and excited for your participants as well and so, makes people want to follow you, makes people want to be part of your community. So establish your brand. And I talk, this, I talk about this in part two, uh, in part one, sorry. Establish your brand. What is your vision, um, your language, your colors? What are you going to be uh, using for your brand? Like, and, and when I say brand, I don't mean like the logo, just the logo. I mean everything because a brand, it's, it's not just the logo and the colors you're going to use is uh, your style. And everybody has such a unique style that I'm sure that everybody will be able to have such a unique brand which is very um i think it's very special that we are able to have our own be our own selves and that be our brand so your brand your vision and find your tribe and i put find your tribe in this as part of your brand and vision because i get asked a lot how do i convert these people how do i make them uh be interested on in me how do i um uh, make sure that I get these people or how do I convince them? Well, uh, my answer to that will be you don't. You you can't keep fighting and trying to convince people to have the same vision of you and have the same branding as you. And by brand, remember, I remember I'm talking about the same, basically the same vision. So how do you convince that you don't convince them? You look for the people who already believe what you believe with people who want to achieve the same things you want to achieve people who want to work in the same things you want to work on people that want to improve the same things that you want to improve so don't try to fight and convince and try to uh it's like it's not preaching what you're doing is not trying to get people to do what you want to do it's more the people who already want to do what they you want to do those people come into your tribe those are your people because those are at the core, people who will stay with you for the longest, people who will carry your vision through. And um, that comes with, it's not just selling yourself, but it's creating a community. And remember your biggest goal with this, your biggest goal when, find, when it comes to finding your tribe, it's creating a space where people who believe what you believe feel comfortable feel happy and feel like they belong. So a tribe and a community is a sense of belonging. And you don't belong in a place where they don't have the same ideas as you or the same beliefs as you. This is why it's so important not to try to convince people, rather attract people who are in the same level as you, who believe what you believe. This is very, very important. So. <clears throat> I put this out here again because I think that I can't emphasize this enough. Make it interesting, make it relevant, keep it simple so that you can create connections. And I think this is something that's happening a lot nowadays. People try to sell you something black as if it's deep, right? Like as if, as if it's because it's confusing, it's meaningful and it has some sort of depth to what they're saying but the reality is is that it's just not clear to you because it's black so you can't see in the dark right you can't see in the dark that's it like, that doesn't make it meaningful or depth or uh that is just so much that you can understand it reality is that things are simple life is simple and it's when we make it complicated that it becomes hard to follow so if we want to keep this going we need to make sure we keep it simple so make sure you keep it simple so that more people can follow you. And I put this one at, at here, be vulnerable uh, because people can connect or relate to a perfect world, right? Life is not perfect. Life is uh, full of ups and downs and bumps. And sometimes we have really good days. Sometimes we have really bad days. Sometimes uh we're feeling like we can move mountains others we feel like we can barely get out of bed and that's life so we need to be able to share that with our community again because people will connect to that so be vulnerable and i'm not saying share your everyday life and share everything you do um i'm not saying that but what you do decide to share make sure that it's 
you're being truthful to yourself. And one very, very important thing is what you do and what you say has to match. Because if it doesn't, uh, people will realize that this soon enough. And then it becomes hard to believe or follow someone when what they say and what they do doesn't match. So make sure that just be who you are. Like with all with all of our pros and cons and with everything that comes with it, just be who you are because no one's perfect and you will find people who are who are in the same level as you and maybe they also make the same mistakes as you or they are also great at the same things you are. So be vulnerable in the sense that allow yourself to share a bit more about you and i put the second part uh, digital resources so i talked a, a lot about the algorithm and how the algorithm works and what we need to do and i think this is very controversial because nowadays it's like social media controls me and social media like I talk about me wanting a new necklace and then there's a necklace on Facebook and uh, I'm being heard and there's like all these things, uh, all these theories that we hear about uh, social media and their ability to control our lives. And the reality is that these are just algorithms. These are machines that are working nonstop uh, to try to figure us out. And not only are they figuring us out, but they're also influencing our ideas, influencing our actions, influencing what we do. So we need to have those algorithms and use them to our advantage so that they work for us. If our goal is to get our vision across, is to find our tribe, is to grow our community, we need to use these algorithms so that that's what actually happens rather than me working for the algorithm. And what do I mean by that? When you provide content that just stays as content that goes on and on and on and on for these social media platforms, but you're not getting anything out of it. Basically, you're working for free. That's what it is. Like if you put things out there, but there's no customer journey, there's nothing coming in return to you. You're just working for these platforms for free. You are basically their entertainment. You're the things that are there just for people to see and you're just making it easier for them. So make sure that you use these platforms for you. Um, this is some. This is why I put it as a part of the G digital resources. Now, I was gonna make a whole video about how to create a campaign on Facebook, uh, how to create a campaign on Instagram, and things like this, or how to add the metrics uh, for YouTube or Google or TikTok. But the reality is, guys. There's hundreds of thousands of YouTube videos on how to do this. So my goal today is actually not to teach you step by step how to do things that you can look up on YouTube. I just want to guide you through what I have learned that has worked and also the, the little changes that I have made that have made a huge difference uh, for me so that hopefully it helps you. So I just want to give you a guidance of the steps I took um, to keep growing or to continue to grow but ultimately it will be your uh, it's on you to learn to use all of these it's on you to actually take it farther so there's tons of information out there uh, that you are you will have access to that's why i decided to focus on this and not on the how to do every single thing um, understanding Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, la landing pages are huge. If you don't have a website, which I understand what's, websites are a pretty big investment. Uh, to be honest, uh, I mean, we keep playing around with the website all the time and there's always something more that we have to do. So landing pages are a great idea for this. And I will tell you why it's so important to have a landing page because when you have facebook and instagram you collect all these likes right but likes take you nowhere if a video has three thousand likes that means nothing three people saw it cool there's like 2.5 billion people in the internet and i got three thousand people to see it okay like that a like 
it's not going to do anything. You need to have a customer journey. You need to have a path for your customer to take that path. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that we have right now. We're posting a lot. We get a lot of likes. We are so focused on how many likes and shares we get, but the likes and shares go nowhere. In order for us to grow our data, uh, our database, uh, we need to have a landing page because we need to have a way that we can actually collect people's information so that we are able to contact them later. In other words, uh, those people whose attention you caught and now are interested, right? Then it goes to the desire that, hmm, maybe I should join. This, maybe I should join. These are your people because these are the ones that are just one step away from taking action. One step away from joining your classes, from buying boots from you, uh, from actually creating a relationship with you. So these guys, you need to be able to communicate with them. And how would I communicate with them if I just have their likes or their comments? So landing pages are an amazing option for that. Uh, I would recommend that you use MailChimp and also do a lot of surveys because knowing what people think and what people want is going to be a huge tool for you. So if you look up MailChimp, I love MailChimp. Um, I use it a lot and you can have it on your social media. Uh, you can connect it to your Facebook. Um, you can connect it to your Instagram and you will be able to actually gather all this data information. Having said that, when you do have a landing page and you have, actually, I was going to, I forgot. Um, I, I will show you some other options for landing pages, but the important thing is that you remember that it's great for, for data. And the reason being is that these emails that you send are, are not just emails, right? Like it's just not blasting people with information, but you want these emails to be something that is again, helpful to them meaningful to them, provide information that you think for free that people would actually pay for. Like that is the key, uh, provide valuable information. Like these emails and these contacts that you have with people have to be actually helpful to them. Because again, information is not communication. So sending a lot of emails, posting a lot of videos, sharing a lot of pictures, is not communicating. You need to, every time you put something out there, think, is this helpful to them? Is it serving a purpose? And if it's not helpful or serving a purpose, at least, is it fun? <laughs> is it pretty? Is it entertaining? Because that's what I go into my social media for, right? Like I may not be looking how to get a business degree on Facebook, but if I find things that are helpful to me or things that are funny or, uh, like a little uh, brain swisher or something that makes me feel inspired. Like, that's cool. I would like to open my Facebook and feel like, yeah, I'm ready to start my day. What she said was awesome and it set my mood for a better day. Like, yeah, I want that. I will follow that person. So uh, use the digital resources to help you. So make sure that you understand each platform and how it works because that's going to be the key for a lot of things in your process. And, uh, well, this one takes you to creating digital connections. Um, and one thing that we have to keep in mind is that you will never just have it figured out. Like it's not gonna, uh, what are all these steps that I'm telling you, it's not going to be like, if you do this, this, and this, this is going to be your result. Like there's no recipe for this. The reality is that you're going to have to continue experimenting, uh, keep track of what you're doing, keep track of what your experiments to make sure that they're working. And that's why I put in here check because, um, we are, are fortunate that we're actually able to track this progress, like on Facebook. You can check your analytics, and especially if you create a campaign, you can see how many people reach your Facebook page. Did they click on, on your landing page or did they just give it a like? Um, was it a like or a follow? Um, did people, um, where were they from? You can actually check that on Facebook and on Instagram. For example, I was posting a lot of stuff always in um, 
English in, on my Instagram. But then I started looking to my analytics and actually most of my followers are from Spanish speaking countries. I wouldn't say just Mexico because I have a lot of people from Argentina, which I had no, no clue that that many people, I knew some follow me, but not that many. Um, from Spain and from Chile, from Ecuador. So I was like, hmm, maybe I should post more information that again, will be relevant to people who actually follow me the most. So knowing where people are from, like for example, if you're from Ontario and you keep posting uh, things that are not relevant to, to your surroundings, right? To your province, uh, probably people are not gonna be able to relate to it. So they, they may just not follow it, right? So check your metrics, check your analytics, especially if you're doing campaigns, I would advise you not to start with a lot of money on campaigns. Like again, uh, the fact that you make a whatever video and you pay a hundred dollars for it doesn't mean that it's going to make you any revenue. So I would suggest if you're going to do a campaign, try trying with small amounts, try $20 for a campaign, uh, try for a week or two weeks. Um, in my experience, it has worked better for me when I do not that much money, like small amounts of money, but for a longer period of time. Like whenever I've done a campaign for a month, uh, with a hundred dollars, it's done a lot more that if I do $40 in a week, for example. So, um, play around with the numbers, play around with the campaigns and see what works for you. At the end of the day, if that brings you money back, uh, then it was worth it, right? Like that's an investment. It's a marketing expense versus uh, that you just putting things out there. Like I said, just working for free for the algorithm. <clears throat> and learn, relearn constantly because what worked one week is not gonna work the next week. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is stepping out of your comfort zone and experimenting. Experimenting is huge and stepping out of your comfort zone, it's huge. Um, I, in one of the books I, I read, it actually said that uh, stepping out of your comfort zone is not natural, right? Like we, there are many reasons why we would step out of our comfort zone, but the, the three main reasons will be one, desire, desire of something better, something new, uh, knowing that you want to change. Uh, two, because of the situation, right? Like we, at least for uh, many of us, we had to step out of our comfort zones because we had no choice. We had no choice. So we stepped out of our comfort zone. So uh, getting out of the situation, uh, changing your, your situation and the third one sometimes is just life. Life takes off your training wheels and you have to ride your bike uh, without training wheels. Sometimes that's just life, that's how it, it is. Uh, and you have no choice, right? But to keep going and that's uh, circumstantial a lot of times. But either way, when you step out of your comfort zone, sometimes we, confuse our feelings or our gut uh yeah our feelings as if it was our gut feeling like no 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 i feel like this is not gonna work so you go back to your comfort zone so just just you take that step out of your comfort zone but then you're like eh, doesn't feel good because it doesn't it doesn't feel good to be out there and until you get comfortable being out there it's it's kind of weird so we don't want to be there so we pull ourselves back and we confuse this feeling of, oh, it wasn't right for me with the, with that opportunity to actually get out of your comfort zone. So oftentimes when we do step out of our comfort zone and we carry through, it's because our desire to achieve what we want to achieve is greater than the discomfort. So really constantly be comfortable being out of your comfort zone because this is gonna be a constant, especially in the digital world, Things change very quickly and you're gonna have to be relearning all the time. And this one I love, connect with others who are doing the same, just like us. Like you guys are uh, part of a huge community and the fact that we can connect with each other and share our ideas, it's a huge plus. 
Um, now here, making the most out of your social media and internet platforms. I think, um, again, this is something that we are not exploding enough. So knowledge is powerful, but also knowledge is very accessible. So if you feel like you don't know something, literally, it's on Google and <laughs> you can Google it. It's on YouTube. Like, it's so easy to find information nowadays. So make sure that you don't leave it at, I don't know how, because if you don't know how, I am sure that there's a five minute video on how to do it out there. So uh, I don't know how should not be an excuse, not now. So I put some steps here. Um, remember how I was talking about customer journey. So I put some steps here on things that I think will be very helpful to you. So the first one is your social media channels. So make sure you're everywhere. And I hear this a lot. Oh, I'm not an Instagram person or I usually only do Facebook or no way I'm doing TikTok. Uh, YouTube, that's not. YouTube is for YouTubers, right? Like that's not for me. I don't have a YouTube page. Uh, well, <laughs> same with landing pages. Ooh, no <laughs> landing pages. I am not tech savvy enough for a landing page. Uh, no way I can do that. So you need to be everywhere because just like you are on Facebook and say you're not an Instagram person or you're on Instagram and you say you barely do Facebook or you don't do TikTok because that's for dancing people. Just like you are only in one space, other people are only in one social media. So if you are only in one, you're missing out on the others. You're not being able to reach as many people as possible because you're just in one. And you're choosing to be just in one because joining the other ones is as simple as downloading the app. And then that's it. You're in. Um, another big mistake that we do is share whatever we have on Instagram. We just share it everywhere, right? Or I make a TikTok and I share it everywhere. That's not going to work <laughs> because we all speak different languages and different social medias. Facebook people are not Instagram people. Instagram people, maybe TikTok people, but are definitely TikTok people, are definitely not landing page people. So we need to create content that attracts the different people on our different social media channels. Then automated customer service, it's huge. And I think many of us don't have this uh nowadays and i blame this on amazon i'm sorry amazon i am a big consumer uh, of amazon but it, it's true that it has made things very hard for everybody else and the internet overall customer service is um basically right there like i have had phone calls at midnight on a friday night and it amazes me um the fact that people think that i will reply to that just boggles my mind because why would I answer a phone call to know what color boots you want a Friday at midnight? Like I am sleeping, but this happens because there are other websites where somebody from the other side of the world will reply, right? They do have customer service 24 seven, which is insane. So we are not able to do that. We're not big enough. Uh, I'm not going to just hire someone on the other side of the world to answer the phone at all times. So a huge help for this and a huge tool for you will be at my customer service. So uh, make sure that you have your pre um, made answers for Facebook, uh, for Facebook messages, for Instagram uh, messages. M use all these tools that we have quick order replies. Um, if you use WhatsApp, I think I'll, I think WhatsApp is not as popular in Canada for some reason, but for example, in Mexico, most of my business is through WhatsApp. Like I spend a good amount of time on WhatsApp. So having my catalog set up on, on WhatsApp, all my, all my quick replies, um, all my messages after hours, this has been huge. So make sure that you optimize as many things as possible. This is very important. Even your voicemail uh, should be able to provide some sort of information, guide people to a different page where they might be able to find the answers they're looking for. If you're not able to reply, this is huge. And then payments should be easy to make. And I have this here. Let me see if I can. I'm sorry, but I have many <laughs> pages 
open up so i'm just gonna try it and see if i can make this different um paper let me look for different options so i can show you sorry i had them out but for some reason they're not uh, out right now okay so paypal just came out with this super exciting thing uh, i think you can see it there awesome um there people just came out with this and i think this is awesome i am super excited that they did this and i can't wait to use it but now actually make let me make it smaller um there ah <laughs> that's not gonna work uh hold on uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what did i do no you know what i'm gonna make it bigger sorry guys uh there okay there we go i'm gonna show you some ideas let me share my screen with you uh give me one second okay there ah it's a lot of buttons sorry there we go okay uh -huh. there we go okay so there it is um Sorry, I just wanted to make sure that you can see it. So, um, PayPal just came out with subscriptions. So, I'm excited to do this because this means that we can do a lot of cool things with this. One of the cool ideas that came out to my head was if you create a subscription, you can have things where that person that subscribes to you, let's say virtual classes or live classes, doesn't matter, uh, because you're going to have automatic payments with this. Um, sorry, PayPal is this. Um, if you just open a PayPal account, or most of you have a PayPal account, just make sure that it's a business account. Um, but the fact that you can create subscriptions now would allow you to make packages where, let's say, people pay... I don't know if you've seen Peloton, where you can have a $3,000, almost $3,000 bike, um, but paid in like $80 um, installments, so $80 a month for I don't know how long. Um, imagine doing something as cool as that where you can say, hey, you can purchase a pair of boots and um, purchase your own, your very own pair of boots and come to my classes for X amount of number. I don't know, you will need to run your numbers to see what works for you. Uh, they'll be able to pay it in installments because you'll be able to charge their card on monthly basis and i think that's so exciting and i you can hear in my voice uh how excited i was to see that they are doing this now because this is going to be huge for us we had um other systems that i was using on the website uh like membership member press is called if you have a website you may want to look into member press um but now paypal has it so it's awesome and PayPal is so easy um, when it comes to payments and creating easy ways for people to pay you. Like you can create a QR code, they scan this code and they pay you. Uh, you can send them your PayPal me link and they can pay you directly there. Like they can enter their debit information or their credit card information and within two minutes they have paid for the monthly charges or yearly or whatever promotion it is you have going on. Payment should be super easy because once i get people to take action imagine this you have your huge line so you have people who are uh you got people's attention you got people's interest you got people's desire and now they're ready to take action they're ready to join your classes they're ready to be part of what you're doing and they get stopped by okay but now how do i do it like where do i sign up where are your classes? How do I pay? Uh, do I pay monthly? Do I pay every two weeks? Uh, how do we, and for you as well? Like how do I keep track of who's paid what and when? Um, and now if you have ten people, it's great. You can control that. Twenty people, you can control that. But you don't want to have twenty people. You want to have three hundred or five hundred or thousand people. So if if I'm gonna be if I wanna if that's my goal to have a lot of people, I need to make it easy so that again my customer journey what's that journey that my customer is going to take 
from the moment they're interested in what I'm doing to actually pay me because at the end of the day I need to make a living out of this I love what I'm doing um, I love helping people I love being part of this I love creating communities uh, but I need to have that be sustainable right so so make your payments automatic so I'm gonna tell you I use both so I'm gonna tell you um, two of the biggest uh, payment platforms I would say is PayPal and the other one is Stripe so I love PayPal because I I do get payments from all over the world I mean not as often from all over the world but at least three or four different countries in pretty regular basis so um, being able to have that connection where I know wherever you are in the world you have access to PayPal and you can pay me um, I really like that about PayPal I like that it's a very secure way of payment and people overall trust PayPal because it's been around for so long that if you see the PayPal stamp you know that it's safe right like you know it's a safe process even if they don't know you yet uh, even if they're not so sure about you if they can use PayPal to pay uh, overall they people tend to feel more comfortable with this so I love PayPal they have a amazing customer service um, they are they, like when it comes to business support they have a lot of business support they have a lot of connections of course we don't like the fees because <laughs> they do keep a big chunk of what you uh, of what you make um, but you know you can also just um, add that into your your budget the other one I use uh, it's stripe and uh, I don't know yeah you can see it so I like stripe because it has pretty much the same features of as PayPal um, to be honest I'm not as familiar with it it's probably why I still like PayPal better but they are um, super easy they are used by you can see here big big selling platforms around the world and one thing that they have that PayPal doesn't have is things like these Google Pay Apple Pay and um, nowadays a lot of companies are just like tapping yeah, right like you just pay to tap to pay um so again if you're looking if your goal is to make payments easy um being able to just tap is pretty easy <laughs> just say you're being able to tap your phone so paypal um i mean sorry stripe has uh, google pay and apple pay which makes it more accessible so i would say have both um i wouldn't choose one or the other have both because whatever they're free uh why not just both and just figure out what you like better um i do like stripe in the sense that they are a lot better at being able to create like your own mini shop like on stripe you can create your own products for example all these things that i'm saying about classes and um making like packages where you buy your boots and you take the and you pay for the classes as well um, it's pretty easy so i do like that about stripe so i would say um i would honestly use both and one cool thing that they provide is a terminal so you can actually have like a physical thing where you can charge payments um, so if you were to do an event or if we eventually go back to live classes this will be great um, they have subscriptions as well and I think I'm not too sure about this one but I saw it somewhere that you can also create a landing page with them uh, and that's the other thing I was gonna say is that oftentimes you're able to create landing pages with um, the platforms that you use and I wanted to show you MailChimp because let me just see um, MailChimp also provides you with a landing page um, yeah you have to pay but hold on it's just taking you to my <laughs> MailChimp um there we go so they also have amazing resources that will be very helpful to you you can start for free but to be honest um if you pay it's just gonna make it a lot easier and you can create a um a lot easier in terms of resources so you can create a landing page here um buying a domain is takes two seconds in like any uh any basically just google domains and buy a domain uh one one 
one website that I like to buy domains at it's uh, SiteGround. I can post that in the comments so that you can look it up. But it's super easy and see, you can share it on your social media. You can share, uh, it's a great way to collect data and it's so easy to do that. Um, again, you can track it, you can create a customer journey, you can add different pictures, emails, and here it talks you through the different paths that your customers can take. Uh, remember that big thing again, the cone, they are amazing for that because it's so easy to be able to track your campaigns. You can connect this to Facebook and Instagram. So if you're decided to make a huge campaign all over Facebook, Instagram, and uh, collecting data through emails, uh, this is huge. And I love MailChimp for that. They do have tons of resources that you can use for free. You can connect it to PayPal and you can connect it to Stripe. So again, from an email, people will be able to buy your classes, to purchase your uh, purchase booths from you. So try to make payments as automatic as possible. This is gonna be huge for you. And these are three tools that have helped me greatly to continue to improve when it comes to that. Okay, now <laughs> I need to figure out how to make this big again. Give me a minute because I'm not sure that's gonna work. Yeah, it is gonna work. Okay, perfect. Okay. And let me try to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. There we go, perfect. Um, so once more, payments should be easy to make online. Try to make payments as easy as possible. I already gave you some ideas of things that you could use for that and then track your progress because that's gonna be huge, 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 huge. So track your progress, uh, that's gonna make a big difference. And I posted here at the end, help your clients help you. I think, including myself, um, because trying something new, it's so vulnerable and putting ourselves out there is something so vulnerable and trying our best and in not working is hard right? Because when you try your best, doesn't necessarily mean it was probably the best, but you did your best and it doesn't work. It's hard. And sometimes we think we want to know what people think when we, people actually tell you what they think, it turns out you didn't actually want to hear it. And this is a, something that we have to get very comfortable with because if we want to really create a connection with people and we really want to build a community we need to know what people think and we need to learn to accept it we need to take it as it comes um, and listen to them listen to what they like but also what they don't like or what they need and also what they don't need also what's extra what they don't really need in their lives because that's gonna make a huge difference. And for that, there's surveys that you can use. Uh, I just survey monkey quite a bit. Uh, survey monkey is super easy. Again, it's just, a, you can just create a free account. Uh, yeah, you can pay so you can have a lot more people, but I think at the moment we don't need to pay for that. Um, and just ask, what do you wanna see? What do you wanna hear? Um, is there anything else I can help you with? Like, are you more interested on losing weight or feeling better or toning or would you like stretching classes? Like, what do you want and what do you need and how do you feel? Um, this is huge. Like, just listen to people and there they will be huge guidance when it comes to you making decisions on what's next. Now, this, um, for some reason, this video doesn't play, which drives me crazy. Um, I don't know why it doesn't play, but anyways, um, good design matters. And anyone who knows me knows this about me. I'm very detail oriented. And to me, the colors, the letters, the pictures, everything that you use, matters and it matters because I think you're an amazing gift I think what you have to give out to people it's amazing and I see an incredible opportunity in all of you to do wonderful things but we need to think about what we have to give as a gift 
and gifts are more exciting when they're properly wrapped right when you have a gift and you get this box that has this beautiful paper and this beautiful bow and it looks gorgeous you're excited to open this you're excited to know what it is and like curiosity pops out it's the exact same thing with information with communication with marketing it's the same thing i visually because i'm just scrolling through things i need to feel excited about this i want to know what it is i want to click on it i want to feel this same excitement curiosity like this oh i really want to see this because that's attractive so good design matters invest into marketing please and i i say this a lot not a lot of people hear me but it, it is huge the fact that you make things colorful organized easy for people to do walk through the progress walk through what your customers are going to encounter once they reach out to you because that it's a huge 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 difference and i have to share this with you guys one of the biggest things i have learned throughout this progress is um when you have a business it's hard to know where to invest or what's next um do i invest into more product right because we hear a lot like do i need more boots um do i need a bigger place um like where do i invest my money and i have learned that if you invest most of what you make into marketing your chances of success are a lot greater and most companies most businesses don't work this way usually when we have our excel sheet of what's going to happen we look into how much we how much it cost to run the business and how much we make and our breaking point right like we will say okay i need 10 people signed up at 40 dollars, and that's my breaking point or i need 30 people signed up at 50 dollars, and that's my breaking point but actually that's not your breaking point. Your breaking point is if you're able to sustain not the everyday running of the business, but if you have money to grow. Because in other words, what you do today, what you invest into today are the seeds of what you're going to be able to harvest later on. So if you are not planting new seeds constantly, eventually you'll run out of things to harvest does that make sense like you need to continue to plant things you need to continue to put more seeds in the ground so as you grow don't don't see it as oh now i have more money for myself see it as now i can buy more seeds so what you plant today is what you're going to harvest tomorrow so think about this because this is very very important what you're receiving right now is what you har you're harvesting from before so if i want to be able to harvest later i need to plan things now so your marketing or your strategy to to grow has to be like your money has to go to marketing your money has to go to continue to build your community because if you don't you will shrink in business if you're not growing you're shrinking so don't get comfortable with things are working i'm able to pay my bills i'm able to uh, make some little bit of extra money uh, i have a good amount of people because that's only going to last for so long you need to continue to plant seeds so that you can constantly harvest and of course the more seeds you can plant the bigger your harvest will be and the next time you're going to be able to plant more seeds and that's going to be a constant so when you're budgeting your your expenses um give marketing a big chunk of it because that's your seeds so your seeds are need to be there and make sure that you have that and take that into account uh-oh Am I out of the, hold on, <laughs> I just want to see, make sure, uh, sorry, oh, I really want to see this because, ah, sorry, 
Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to take a lot of your time, guys, but I wanted to close this up. First of all, uh, thanking you for spending all this time with me and going through all this process with me. I have really enjoyed growing with you guys and learning this with you guys. I have learned a lot, um, <clears throat> not just in terms of streaming and uh, using a mixer and a microphone, but I have also learned a lot about this. And I think, like I said, a lot of these things I did it out of intuition, but also I learned a lot in terms of uh, growth, like really thinking about growing and where is it I want to take this. So I loved, I loved, loved, loved learning all of these because it was a huge um, learning curve for me. And, and also just being able to share it with you guys was very special to me. So I thank you so much for being there. And, and I, I wanted to leave you with this because uh, happiness comes from growth. And this is something that I always have in me. I think I am I am someone who experiments a lot. Uh, for some weird reason, I'm not really scared to fail. Um, I don't know. I think I got used to it from very early age to fail, get up, fail, get up. And I have that in me. And I think a lot of people don't have it in them. And I recognize I have it in me. Um, but I also feel like sometimes... Uh, we need push from other people and we need to learn things from other people who make you feel inspired and make you feel like you can act you can also get there right like having that feeling of i can also do that i think it's a wonderful feeling because it gives you inspiration and the moment you stop growing you start shrinking i i do believe that so your happiness comes from growth you're you yeah, happiness is growth. So don't stop growing. Keep planting seeds. Never stop planting seeds, guys, because uh, there's nothing more rewarding than being able to achieve things like this. And I read this again in one of the books I had, so I just wanted to put it here. If from yesterday to today you experience growth, then you are succeeding. If there is, If every morning you get up and you have this feeling that of I, I am growing, I am learning something new, I am nourishing, <laughs> I'm taking care of my seeds uh, so that I can harvest later on. Uh, that's a great feeling. And that not only comes from a business point of view, but I think in life, there's no bigger inspiration than knowing that there's more out there. Um, you know, instead of uh, craving yesterday, just be excited for tomorrow. And also leave today because today is very important. And growth comes from consistency. And again, when you say when people confuse consistency with repetition, it doesn't consistency doesn't mean repetition. Doesn't mean doing the same thing. It means that you keep trying, you keep experimenting. You are flexible with what you're doing, uh, but you are consistent in term in the sense that you keep going at it. Um, Achieve your potential with the help of the digital world. And I think this is huge. And I do hope that this is one of the things that you learn and you take with you out of this. Um, don't be afraid of the digital world. Don't be afraid of this new world because it's part of, it's part of change. It's part of progress. It's part of life. Uh, I am sure that 150 years ago, uh, People were, you know, the younger people were also crazy. And I'm sure a hundred years ago, people were also crazy. And if I ask my grandfather today, they, he would also say that what's happening right now, it's crazy. And in 50 years from now, we would also think that what's happening in 50 years is crazy. So I think it's just a part of change. Um, we humans are not comfortable with change. We don't like new things. Uh, we don't like things that take us out of our comfort zone. But there's a lot of things that you can do, guys, and use it to your advantage. So, yes, um, social media uses us, but we need to learn to use social media so they don't use us. Rather, we use it or use social media as a great tool for us to continue to grow. So keep that in mind. 
and I wanted to show you some of the of, uh, things that I have experimented with. I think I have it here. Let me check. Uh, hmm. mm, where do I put it? Hold on. <laughs> here? Okay. Uh, I think I can just go here and go like this. Uh, these are some of the other things I have done just to continue to compete in this digital world. Um, this is a V card. So V cards are cr created. So everyone has a V card nowadays. So on this v, uh, v card, if you click on here, it takes you directly to the store. Uh, you can also download all my information. You can see all the workshops and certifications I have. Um, my email address, my phone number, my social media, each of these buttons takes you to the social media and just me. And if you download this, you can download it straight to your phone. Um, if you, ha if you want a V card, um, we can order some from you. Like I can order some from you with your own logo and your own pictures. Um, and of, of course in English. <laughs> So let me know if you want one, because uh, those are easy things that we can make for you guys. And if you want to know how to use it, um, if you have my picture video here, just scan, try to take a picture of this code that you see on your screen. Try to take a picture of it with your phone. Uh, you will see how it just sends you a Safari link. You click on the link and you're able to see my picture. You're able to see my V card. So it's as easy as that. And I just wanted to show you some of that stuff because those are things that I have learned <laughs> through this process. These are things that I learned so that I can show you. And it makes me very excited to be able to share this with you. Uh, if you want to try it, that would be awesome. And again, thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for your time, for being part of this. For, um, uh, for me, it was a huge pu push to be able to learn more. Uh, by teaching you more. So I do hope that you learn something from this. I hope you take something from it. I will put it, I will put this video on the Rebound uh, Fitness Academy uh, website. So if you want to look at it again, or if you want to see part one and part two, both are already on the website. So you'll be able to see them there and follow the whole thing. And hopefully that helps you. Um, thank you so much for watching these guys. I'm going to